All right, I think I'm live. I'm having a little bit of an issue. Uh, there we go, now we're posting on Facebook. Hi everybody. I'm having Facebook issues today. So interesting. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, good. People are watching. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, cool. This uh, Facebook just keeps changing stuff around, and uh, every time I go live, it's different. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is finding that, but we're broadcasting into the Brilliantly Aware Facebook group, and it might be on a different link than some people than we had before because... Um, Something's going funny. I'm on a different computer today. So anyway, today we're talking about um, what's repelling your magic. And I wanted to address this because of the things going on in the world right now. Let me just say we're, um, we're here. My computer is just so crazy today. Um, with the things going on in the world right now, it seems like it can seem like there's not a lot of magic at all happening. And then for other people, there's a lot of magic happening. So how do you, how do you actually identify what's going on in your world and how to, instead of pushing the magic away, really inviting it in? And I think this is a really, really, really valuable and important conversation right now, because um, if it's if you've been um, before, like the magic hasn't been alive and real for you and you're wanting to have more of it now, whatever was happening before is probably the same stuff that's happening now. So I would love to, to hear about that from you guys. And hold on one second, I need to just check one thing here on the broadcast. But welcome everybody that's joining. Hi, hi. See if you wanna say hi, there we go, okay. Sandia's saying hi, hi, okay, good, so it's working. All right, so here's the thing. So what I wanna talk about today is, is this is what the heck repels the magic, right? So if you're somebody who is like, I wanna have the magic in my life, how do I do that, especially when uh, things are going on in the world that seem uncontrollable. It seems like things aren't good. And there's a lot of things in the world right now that do seem like that, that do seem like they're, you know, what's really going on here? Um, so I've, in my last few videos, oh great, hi everybody, I'm glad you found us. So the last few videos that I've done, um, I did one about timelines, I did another one on my personal Facebook page around you know, staying in your lane, basically. And right now what's happening on the planet, and it's very, very obvious to see when you're not bombarded by it, but when you take a 30,000 foot view, you can see that the world is being divided. Either it's going to, we, we just have to follow the rules and be safe and um, there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of just tell me what to do, you're in charge sort of energy, right? We see that. And then we see the other side of people really resisting and, and having, you know, like asking questions and going, what the heck's going on here? And there's an uproar, right? And those are the sort of the, the two veins. And then there's this other space where is like, hey, we still have creation abilities. We still have magic. We still have the quantum field available to us no matter what's going on in the world. And when I look at, look at what's going on, it's, I, I feel like it's a consciousness awakening. It's a spiritual awakening for the planet, almost like a forced one. It's like anybody who hasn't been paying attention, you're looking at it now and this is what it looks like. So it might look like not great stuff happening out there, but I feel like a lot of truth is coming out. A lot of, a lot of people are being forced to pay attention, forced to be, to wake up and forced to actually choose. Do we want to keep following this timeline or do we actually know that something greater is possible and that something greater is, is already happening. So how do you access more of your magic instead of repelling it? So, what I want to look at today is go, is looking at how were you functioning before, 
right? Because what we can tell with how you might have been functioning before, or maybe for a long time, like a lifetime, a lot of times that gets carried through times like we're having right now, right? So if you might have been um, having like somebody who might have been complaining a little bit more about things is likely complaining more now. A, a, somebody that's more optimistic in their joy is likely still optimistic and in their joy. And when we have these um, these capacities with energy, then we we are the director. We are like the the maestro of our realities when. We know that we have a choice in any moment on what energies we get to embody and be and project. And when we know that, then we're being the dominant energy of our reality. Okay. Now this doesn't say that when something comes up, you deal with it, right? You allow those energies to come in and be present and you allow those energies to come in and give you awarenesses. But when you're dwelling on them, when they keep redirecting to the same energies, that's when you want to pay attention. And that's what like Dr. Joe Dispenza would say is an energetic addiction. And energetic addiction is a killer. It repels magic like crazy. It will repel everything awesome from you when you're functioning in these energetic addictions. Now, some people think their energetic addictions are, you know, a medical issue, but really it's more of a bioenergetic issue. <laughs> going on. And a little bit about energetic addictions, if you don't know already. Energetic addictions, uh, I'm not talking about, um, you know, like a lot of people, they would say you know, smoking is an addiction and you're wrong because you can't stop smoking, right? I'm not talking about the rightness or wrongness. What I'm actually talking about is, is the actual addiction that goes on in your body to these lower energies. And we'll start from the beginning. Most of these energetic addictions you have picked up because of the people that you were surrounded with when you were a kid. So from zero before you were born up to, you know, I would say seven is mostly when we get programmed. And then, you know, beyond that, we're making choices on top of the programming, the conditioning. Okay. So if you were around somebody that was a, a um, uh, depressed, right? When you were a kid, then you might have tendencies to be depressed. Or if you were around somebody that liked drama and liked the adrenaline, then you might have tendencies to that. But it's not really your choice. It's actually more your subconscious energetic addiction. And the energetic addiction, it's actually not, like I said before, it's not actually a, a bad thing where we're like, well, you're addicted to drama. It's actually because it's your comfort zone. It's what you've been conditioned with to your comfort zone. So everything you might do to get rid of the drama keeps leading you back to drama. And you're like, how do I keep creating this drama in my life? Well, it's because your energetic system is set to um, have that be your homeostasis. That's what's normal. That's what's comfortable. That's where it's set to. So kind of like the dial on your, um, on your, uh, heating unit or cooling unit at your house, right? You're always going back to that 70 degrees, 70 degrees. And most of the unconscious ones are not ones you chose. Those are the ones you inherited. You inherited from somewhere. And then your choices in life have built, up all the cognition of, oh, this is why this is, or I can't do this because, and all of the evidence is what your mind builds up on top of that. Okay. And um, if you want to know all the quantum science and the science and the biology science and all the chemicals and everything that works, um, go read um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, but also Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. It tells you all about the science behind all of this. And this is why, though, a lot of people can't change their lives it, or they try and they try everything because they try, but their energetic system keeps bringing them back to that energy, that core energy. So some of the ones that we typically see are a depressed energy, sad, lonely. I'm not, I'm, I'm all alone. I don't fit in. Unsatisfied. Um, uh, frustrated is another one. Angry, bitter, um, if we go to rage, like a deep rage. So those are some of the energetic addictions that no matter what you do, if you keep leading back to those core energies, those core energetic addictions is what we call them, conditioned energies, things that your subconscious is reproducing for you because that's normal and it's trying to give you a normal experience, then we can actually break through those. But what happens is 
if you go in life, so one thing that was happening to me is I kept going, I want to create more money. And this was like 10 years ago. I want to create more money. I want to create more money. And I kept trying. And then I'd go all the way back to it's never going to work out for me and being dissatisfied that nothing was really working out. So that was the core energy that I kept leading back to. Well, lo and behold, both of my parents were very dissatisfied in life <laughs> in multiple times in their life, especially in my early childhood, right? They were dissatisfied with the amount of money they were making. They were dissatisfied with um, a number of other things going on, right? So I picked up dissatisfied is the way to be. Like dissatisfied is normal, right? So in my coming out of that energetic addiction, I had to go, wait a second, what energy do I want to make as a priority over and beyond this dissatisfaction. And so I started looking at pleasure. I started looking at magic. I started looking at confidence. I started looking at joy, not as a, you know, slapping it like, like icing on a poop pie, but going, how do I really want to feel in life? Right? I want to feel fulfilled. I want to feel satisfied. I want to feel like I did it confident. Right? And when I started making those energies my priorities, what automatically showed up was where I wasn't satisfied, where I wasn't having any magic, where things were frustrating. I think the two big ones for me was frustrating because I kept trying stuff and then it would never really work out or it would start to work out. So I got teased and then it would just fall flat or it would go back to the way it was. And I was left feeling hopeful, but um, never fulfilled, kind of like on Christmas, right? When Santa doesn't bring you what you want. <laughs> You're like, I wanted the red bike, but I got a brush, right? Like, like, wait, how, how did I not get what I wanted, right? This, this whole thing when we try and try and try and it doesn't work out. These are, that means Typically, it doesn't mean lack of like that you're not trying hard enough. It doesn't mean that you're not even doing things that might be helpful. It doesn't mean you don't want it bad enough. It actually means that there's something subconscious that's running the show. And these energetic addictions is what I've identified in my work that really make a difference when you start going, oh, what are the energies that keep showing up for me? No matter what I do, those are the ones that keep showing up. Right. And so you can look right now and I've got Jane saying depressed, dissatisfied. Yeah. So if those are the ones that keep showing up, those are your energetic addictions. And I've got a whole process that we're going to be teaching um, that I've taught before. that will be teaching again in the next uh, the new upcoming class called Energetic Mastery, um, where we get to dive in and unhook those, but also replace them with what will create the magic, what will create you as confident, satisfied and redirect your focus to those. The hardest part of getting into your subconscious is realizing what's what's actually running the show, right? And when you realize these energies are actually what's diverting you, your attention, your choices, but also the energies that you're being. So if you keep going back to dissatisfied, then guess what shows up in your reality? More ways to be dissatisfied every single time. And you're like, Oh, I'm not satisfied with that. Not satisfied with that. And then you're frustrated and then you're angry and then you're pissed off. And then you're just like hopeless. You're like, Oh, is anything really ever going to work? Right. I know I felt like that, um, many times with a number of different things in my life. And it just kind of repeats this pattern and, and maybe life even gets better, but you're still repeating the pattern. And I noticed I was doing that in a few areas and I've seen clients just, and you repeat. So, um, in the class that we'll be launching next week, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to unhook all of that stuff. And I'm going to show you a process to go through all of that so that you can really step into going, no, I'm going to consciously choose because your conscious mind can choose, but you have to be aware of what your unconscious is doing to yourself. Okay. Cause if your conscious mind is like, I'm going this way, but your, but your leg is tied to the old way, then you're really not going to go anywhere at all. So I would love to, if, if this is something that's going on in your world, I would love to take you through that process. So another thing to look at is, like I said before, the, what are those energies that no matter what you do, you keep having them. And you can ask yourself, how long have I had this frustration? How long have I been dissatisfied? How long have I felt depressed? And just look through your life going backwards and see when did it really start? Can you even pinpoint a time in your life of when that started? Or has it just sort of always been there? 
And I think that's one of the biggest misnomers is people think, oh, that's just, it's always been there. So that's just how it is. No, it actually isn't, doesn't have to be like that. It's, it's every single time it's inherited. It's either brought through from another existence of yours to work through this lifetime, or it's inherited um, with basically the air that you were breathing, the energy that you were absorbing as a kid, and now we're projecting it into our lives. So dismantling all of that. So going from repelling. So these energetic addictions literally repel the magic, that repel it. So what's happening in the world right now is a massive trigger to see where you're functioning from. So if you have, you know, certain areas of your life that are really great, and then other areas of your life where you're, we'll just use dissatisfied, because that's a very common one, dissatisfied and frustrated, um, then you want to look and say, okay, so was I dissatisfied and frustrated before this whole thing happened a couple of months ago, right? How long has this really been going on? Right? And then one question you can just ask yourself right now is, is what is it that I would like? What energy would I like to be in? What emotion, what feeling would I like to have in my life every day? What would I like to be my new normal? Okay, because when you when you start to look at that and you're like, just choose satisfied, what would it be like if I was just satisfied in life? What you're going to start to see is where those energetic addictions are. And that's part of our brilliant awareness is that we will, it will show us everything that's not that so that we can make shifts and we can make changes and we can let stuff go and we can add new. So we can craft our reality, craft our responses, right? And I think one of the things that people I see do a lot when they're in the automatic response system of their energetic addictions is they go, oh, I want to have more magic. I want to be satisfied. And then they start to see the things in their life that they're not satisfied with that maybe or maybe not they've, they've consciously acknowledged. And then they go, oh, see, it's not, it's not possible because look at all of this stuff. But that's actually showing you exactly what to do. It's giving you the next steps to start cleaning up your field so that you can remove those ways of being that created this reality, this your field right here, your, um, your personal universe, right? And once you start cleaning those up, then all of a sudden things start to change. All right, let me look at what you guys have been saying here. Yay, I like the sound of that. Yep, interesting. I do have days of happy and some days of mix. Yes, my mom was depressed and my dad was frustrated and now I'm passing that on to my kids. Yeah, so I wonder what else might be available. Now, here's the thing. Kids and, and everybody that has ever been around a child, especially under the age of two, it, you don't, you're not born frustrated, typically. You're not born dissatisfied. <laughs> right all of that is 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 conditioning it's all just conditioning all of it's just conditioning and what we know about conditioning is that you can uncondition but you have to know where you're going to like what you would what you would like to go to instead so that you have some points of reference otherwise it just keeps looping around over here because you haven't gotten to the unconscious part yet. You haven't gotten into the the subconscious programming that is the conditioning. Cool? Yeah, they're 18 and 22. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, one of my clients, uh, she, she started unraveling all of this a few years ago for herself, and she had um, some issues with postpartum depression after her kids were born, and they're... 17, 18 now and 20 or 21, right? So, and she just started this a couple of years ago and she started unraveling it. And when she started unraveling it, she started to see how it impacted them, you know, 17 years into their life and how that, um, the, the hopelessness and the depression and the frustration and confusion, because when you have postpartum depression, it's, it's confusing, of like, why do I feel this way? I just had this amazing baby. Like, what's going on, right? And then back then, there wasn't a lot of help for it, right? And especially if you're in a relationship that's not supportive, then you have all these compacted things. And then you have secrets. And then you have like, like all of these different things that can show up. Well, she got to see how all of that transferred to her children. And so her on un, releasing that actually assisted them. And every time she would do a big release and make a make a choice that stepped her into uh, a different version of herself 
we'll call it that, then she saw them have an awakening at the same time because it was like they were still connected to her energetic conditioning, unknowing. We don't know we're doing this consciously until we do. And then all of a sudden they would have a breakthrough, right? And it was like, sometimes they weren't all that pretty. And sometimes it was, they had to, but she wasn't facilitating them. She wasn't telling them what was going on or anything. It was just the energies, once you, once you dissolve those energies, they dissolve from everybody that's connected to them. So, and that's one of the cool things about doing this kind of work. Yep, yep, exactly, Jane. It's been a way of life because that's what's been modeled to me. And not just modeled to you, but energetically delivered. So it's like this whole subconscious energetic um, world that we, 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 we are, are born into. And what's really interesting to me is that we go from when we're in the womb, right? Because we get patterning there, we get conditioning there, all the vibes. And into the first two years of life before we have words, before we have um, language cognition to go into our brain, we all we're doing is just picking up vibes. So we're picking up frequencies. We're picking up how to be, how to feel. That's all we have until we start developing that language and being able to process the, the language communication. And then we have that. So we have this whole subconscious layering of energies and frequencies and patterns and ways of being. How do you, I got a body, how do I be, right? So you're just going, oh, like that and like that and like that and just taking them all, right? Putting them in there. And then when we start developing language, it's like it goes here, but we don't often have times have language for what we picked up before we were two years old. It just was there. So oftentimes I'll work with people and they'll be like, I've just, ha I've just always been this way. Yeah, because you got it before you could speak, before you had any cognition of time even, right? So it gets lodged in there. And then there's some, you know, many cases where we've brought things through from other um, lifetimes, so to speak other um, realities we've lived in that is is coming so we can unravel we can unravel all of that because our true essence is our true essence our true essence of being is our divine connection to spirit it is, it's a clear channel everything that's not us is packed on there and all of that can be released have you ever um i remember i lived in colorado growing up and so we would have these massive snowstorms and you'd pack on all the clothes because it'd be freezing once you went outside. But then after you, we would build, be building snow forts, we start getting hot and you just start taking off the layers. And you know, you're, we would be in the snow forts and it'd actually be really warm in there. So you'd be in there with like no coat on at all. So I feel like that's sort of what we're, what we're doing is we're, we're shedding all of these layers of conditioning and programming and rightness and wrongness and and even shedding beliefs of how reality is who we are and because if we look at oh my god if we just tune in to the fact that we're all just energy we're all just frequencies we're all just space we're all just these these configurations of consciousness right that you know everything is malleable Right? And it's times like right now where we, we have all of these things being projected at us. Like, this is how our new normal is going to be. This is how reality is. You're going to get sick. Be afraid. We're going to control things. Like, that's kind of what media is presenting right now. And it's like, whoa. They have to be so forceful. If you notice, they have to be so forceful in their delivery and create so much fear that hopefully people believe it so they align to that agenda. But when you really get that all of this is just sort of like, it's all malleable and it's sort of like just a big video game that we have, we are these infinite energies and we get to have a body kind of like the movie Avatar, right? I like to think of it like a video game and we get to function here, then it becomes a lot less significant of what they're trying to project, I say they, whoever they is, of the fear and and all that kind of stuff. But what's really cool about what's happening right now is that you can look and see what is this triggering within me? 
what sort of heavier energies is all of this, whatever aspect of it, triggering within me? For some people, it's wearing a mask. There's a big conversation about that out there right now. Some people, it's about the vax. Some people, it's about um, the fear of getting sick and dying and the illusion of death right? Like, so there's all of these different things. It's like, what is it triggering in you? What energy is that bringing up? How does that feel? And if that's a, cons you can just ask, is this something that has been a consistent constant in my life? You go, okay, is that one of my energetic addictions? Because those are the things that put blinders on us so that we can't see or perceive the choices and the energies that will allow the magic to flow in. So I'll leave you with this question today is what if no matter what's going on around you, you could still be happy? You could still be the magic that you are? What if you are the one that gets to say if you're satisfied or not? What if, what if, let me put it this way, would you be willing to be the only one that you know that is having a magical life? And that's a hard one for some people because we all wanna bring everybody together. But we have to remember that every single one of us has our own reality that we are, we are creating. And that when you go right to that space, it will naturally energetically inspire others. You don't even have to do anything. So it's not about bringing others with us or convincing anybody else. It's about being it yourself. Yeah. Oh, this, these analogies work really well to see what you're saying. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad that's helpful. Awesome. Thanks, Sonia. All right, you guys, I will leave you with that question is, would you be willing to be the only one that you know, besides me or maybe us, or who knows, maybe a world full? That's what I keep asking for is, what would it take to have a world full of people who know that they're magic and who get to be it in the world? But sometimes if, if especially with, I keep saying times like this, Right, I say times like this, like there's ever been a time in our lifetime where it's been like this, where I can't say that there has in, in my experience. Um, but in this time in life of going, if I'm the only one that has it, would I be okay with that? Would I be okay? And that's what will set you free. Because you won't have to bring anybody else with you. You won't have to try to free anybody else from it. You don't have to convince anybody else of what you yourself are choosing to experience, you can just soar. And that alone will be an either, well, for some people, it will be a massive inspiration for the energetic field. We're actually creating new realities. And for those who want to be naysayers or whatever, that's fine. They get to have those energetic addictions. They get to have their reality. It's their choice. All right, you guys, I adore you. Thank you so much for joining me. We've got big stuff happening next week. So I'm super excited to announce my new class called Energetic Mastery. I've been working hard on it and um, we're almost ready. <laughs> almost ready to bring it out. And I am really um, wanting to bring this in a way that em empowers people to really get who you really are in that space uh, so that you can facilitate yourself into being the divine, miraculous, brilliant master creator of your reality. So stay tuned for more of that. All right, you guys, um, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining, joining me live. I appreciate you. And if you're watching the replay, just hashtag replay and we'll see you next week. Bye, you guys.